AI is fueling a nuclear renaissance, and Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos are in the mix. This is an article from Investors.com that caught my attention as I've been doing a bit of research on nuclear energy lately. One of my subscribers commented on a video not too long ago asking me what I thought about nuclear energy, and to be totally honest, I hadn't done a lot of research on it, so I figured that it would be a good time to at least dip my feet in and see what the hype is all about. So according to this Investors.com article, they say that the sharp growth in data centers actually benefits nuclear power. So I'd heard of this firm before, Oaklo. Um, it was actually founded by Sam Altman from OpenAI, and it's a startup that went public through a SPAC. Now, uh, SPACs are not my favorite thing. I've been a bit critical on SPACs just because, in general, they don't tend to be the most solid businesses. But that's, that's what a startup is, right? So maybe it makes sense that he took his startup public through a SPAC. And it, it makes sense why this type of thing would be gaining popularity. So the big AI craze, right, that started with generative AI and chat GPT, it's, it takes a lot of electricity to run those kind of things because they're being powered by supercomputers in a data center somewhere. And those computers require a lot of energy to run, you know, accelerated computing, very energy intensive. And like it says here, data centers suck up lots of electricity and there are actually some people who are speculating that we might see some kind of electricity shortage just because of how much demand there is for generative AI. Um, I don't believe that that will necessarily happen, at least not in the near future, but it does beg the question whether nuclear becomes a more attractive option because of this high demand for electricity. So the reason that nuclear is being considered here, is especially more than other alternative energy sources like solar and wind, uh, is just because of the high energy density in nuclear energy. So here's a little chart, and this is, uh, this is not even a joke. I know that this is a little comic here, but... It's basically saying that coal and gasoline have an energy density, right? How rich these sources are in energy of 24 and 46 megajoules per kilogram. Uranium, on the other hand, is insanely dense and is exponentially denser than these other forms of energy. So the thought is by using nuclear fission with uranium, you can produce a lot of electricity with just a little bit of uranium. And I think that makes a lot of sense. So just to put this in perspective, here's a little example. How far can you go? So we're talking about a standard vehicle. So using this car example, let's say one kilogram of oil would allow this car to drive about 20 kilometers. And I apologize, this is a Canadian website. So if you're from the US, I know, I know you have to use the metric system. Oh, it's the worst, the metric system. Um, but bear with me. One kilogram of oil allows a car to drive 20 kilometers. A kilogram of so the same amount, a kilogram of nuclear fuel like uranium would take a car uh, 1.77 million kilometers. That's a trip from the Earth to the moon and back twice. So what I'm getting at is that these are incredibly energy dense and do have the possibility to solve uh, the electricity shortage that we might have. So if a shocking fact like that makes you ask, well, why aren't we just using nuclear for everything? It comes down to safety and the environment. So nuclear reactors could potentially be very dangerous for the environment and for humans. So an uncontrolled nuclear reaction in a nuclear reactor could result in widespread contamination of air and water. Right now, the nuclear reactors that we have in place, uh, they have a lot of safety systems. They have very skilled operators, not like Homer Simpson from The Simpsons and they undergo lots of testing and maintenance. But the reason we don't use this in a bigger scale is because if handled incorrectly, it, it could be really detrimental. So the benefit of having more electricity, uh, at least currently in our society, doesn't quite outweigh the dangers of something going awry in a nuclear facility. Additionally, nuclear energy is not 100% clean. It does produce radioactive waste, as you've probably seen on cartoons, the green slop. Um, it is a real thing, radioactive waste is at least, um, and it can be dangerous to human health, even for up to thousands of years. This doesn't just disappear, it doesn't just wash away. So as you might imagine, radioactive waste is managed very carefully. There's lots of special regulations regarding handling it, transporting it, storing it, and disposing it to protect health and the environment. So we can't just go out and scale up nuclear energy overnight, but it may be a viable option if we do start to see an electricity shortage at a small scale, we could probably ramp up nuclear energy production. So that brings me to a couple of stocks. The first one that came to mind when I thought of renewable energy is GE Vernova. This was spun off from General Electric, GE. 
the company that uh, you might be familiar with as being a very, very old company. This is their renewable energy segment. Um, and so I went into their investor presentation to see how much nuclear energy exposure you'd be getting. And in reality, it is quite small. When we look at year to date in 2024, nuclear as a segment for GE Vernova only makes up about 5% of their total revenues. The majority of it does come from gas power. So I wouldn't consider GE Vernova a nuclear energy stock. You'd get 5% exposure to nuclear. Same thing with Next Era Energy. So this is a company that I do own. They say that they own seven commercial nuclear power units in Florida, New Hampshire, and Wisconsin. So those are states of the United States if you're not from the U.S. But Nexter Energy doesn't really offer that much more nuclear energy exposure than GE Vernova did. Nexter Energy owns stake in NEP. It's a joint venture subsidiary type of thing. Uh, that's Nexter Energy Partners. And Nexter Energy Partners is the renewables arm. That's where they do the majority of their renewable energy projects like solar and wind. As far as adjusted EBITDA from their, which is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization from their nuclear segment, it makes up only about 10% of their total clean energy portfolio. So again, a very small percentage of the overall company. So GE Vernova and Nexter Energy might be quote unquote safer ways to play nuclear if you'd like to get a small exposure to nuclear without going and diving in on a nuclear company. But if you directly wanted exposure to nuclear energy, there is a nice VanEck ETF. Now I happen to like the VanEck ETFs a lot. They have a great semiconductor ETF, which is uh, SMH, but the VanEck NLR nuclear and uranium ETF is probably one of the better ETFs out there for getting exposure to uranium. What I like to do when looking to get exposure to a new theme is to find a thematic ETF and look at the top holdings. So we can go down the list a little bit. Public Service Enterprise Group, PEG, is at its heart a utility company serving New Jersey, which is one state in the United States, but they do operate nuclear facilities. Even though it's just one state, New Jersey, their nuclear plants generate 40% of that state's electricity. So that is quite exciting. Even though they are just a utility company at the end of the day, operating those nuclear facilities has clearly paid off as they're able to power 40% of the entire state's electricity. If you wanted to steer away from utilities and look directly at uranium companies, there are things like energy fuels, which mine for uranium. Uranium is used in nuclear energy because uranium has the unique ability to undergo nuclear fission. So it's a very complex reaction that produces energy, which again can be used for electricity. I am not a scientist. This is above my area of expertise, but all we need to understand, I think, for these purposes is that uranium is useful because it can undergo nuclear fission, which is what causes energy generation from a nuclear power plant. So Energy Fuels is a uranium miner. Not only do they mine the uranium, but they recycle it, which like we talked about earlier, has a lot of regulations around it. So that may be a bit of a moat for the company. They operate all over the world. So they have facilities for development and production of uranium in the US and Australia, and even production in Africa. They don't only do uranium, so that is obviously one that is obviously one side of their business. However, they also have conventional mines and mineral sands where they can produce rare earth oxides and things like medical isotopes for a wide variety of applications. So medical isotopes for things like cancer treatments and rare earth oxides for things like EVs and wind energy. However, uranium remains their core business. Energy Fuels is unfortunately a small company with less than a billion dollars in market cap, but you can see that they've grown a bit in the past five years with their stock up about 150%. If we zoom out, we can see that they have been seeing some staggering revenue growth lately with revenues in 2023 up 200%, but we have to take that with a grain of salt because they only had 12.5 million in revenues in 2022. So Energy Fuels, definitely a high risk, high reward potential type of stock. Let's look next at what I think is probably the internet's top pick for a nuclear stock and probably would be my top pick as well, and this is Cameco. Cameco is a Canadian company. They're listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange under CCO and on the New York Stock Exchange under CCJ. So they are dual listed, so if you're a U.S. investor, you can buy CCJ. They have these three uranium facilities, MacArthur River, Cigar Lake, and Inkai, which is a joint venture. And then they have fuel services, which is the conversion of the energy. So we could say their core business is mining and refining uranium. 
So obviously, Cameco's success is going to be directly correlated, I would say, to the price of uranium. So on Cameco's website, they actually have a graph of uranium prices, which we can see have been steadily rising over the past five years, uh, but have been on a decline since uh, the end of last year. Another thing that Cameco produces is these bundles. So these nuclear fuel bundles, and it's a group of fuel rods that are all, as you can imagine, bundled together, which provide fuel for nuclear reactors. It says here, depending on the design, each reactor core may have dozens of fuel assemblies. So this is one of the picks and shovels to a nuclear energy plant. So obviously Cameco, direct pure play for nuclear energy. It's honestly really tough to analyze these stocks because nuclear energy is, in the grand scheme of things, potentially still in its early stages. And again, it's directly tied to the price of uranium. Um, however, we can see Cameco has been performing incredibly well, right? Uh, they do pay a small dividend, which makes me believe that there is some stability in their business. Um, we did see that uranium prices have been going up. So if uranium prices suddenly tank, uh, maybe that's bad for Cameco, but maybe that's not likely to happen because of these increased demands for electricity that we're seeing with generative AI, right? When we look at revenues, we kind of see the same thing as energy fuels, where they're a bit sporadic on a quarterly basis. But when we zoom out, they've been seeing some incredible growth since 2021, uh, with revenues up 38.5% year over year, and they are profitable. And not only are they profitable, but they are free cash flow positive. So I think Cameco would probably be the top pick for me if I was looking to get exposure to nuclear energy. They are the largest pure play uranium and nuclear energy company at an $18 billion market cap. They do have over $2 billion in annual revenue and they develop products that are integral to nuclear reactors. So like I said, you're getting that pure play exposure. However, this is an incredibly risky theme. Um, it it relies a bit on speculation that we are going to keep seeing this increased energy demand and that uranium prices are going to continue to rise. Obviously, this sector is going to see a lot of headwinds with regulation. Um, like I said, there's some serious environmental impacts of nuclear energy if it goes awry. And even if it doesn't, recycling that radioactive waste is a big hassle and does require a lot of resources. So it may not be the perfect solution, but it's definitely something that's worth looking into. Um, so leave me a comment down below. Do you like the looks of Cameco stock? Are you interested in the nuclear energy thesis? I would love to hear some more thoughts as, like I said, I'm not an expert, but just kind of looking to take an objective approach and learn more about this investment theme. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you disliked it, please hit the dislike button and let me know how I can improve. I really appreciate some constructive feedback. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you all have an amazing day.